Hello everyone and welcome back to your Colin College Frisco Campus Makerspace. Today I'll be showing you how to make these wildflowers using our Dremel LC40 laser cutter. This project uses birch plywood, but this machine will cut a variety of materials, including acrylic, leather, and cardstock. Okay, so the first thing you need before using the laser cutter is an image file of some sort. The Dremel accepts PDF, SVG, JPEG, and PNG files. You can use a couple different programs to create these files, but today we're going to use Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator is available in our makerspace for your use, and you can come in anytime to use it. I'm going to open the program and create a file that's 12 by 12. This is the same size as the wood that I'll be using to cut. Creating a file from scratch can sometimes seem intimidating. Luckily, there are many free files and images on the internet. For today's project, I searched wildflower silhouette free in Google Images and found an image that I liked. It's always important to make sure what you are using is actually free to use so that you aren't stealing anyone else's work. Today's file is from Enliven Designs. I've included a link to the file in the description of the video. Once I found an image I liked, I find that copying the image is easier than saving and importing it into Illustrator. So I right click, copy image, Go back to Illustrator and go ahead and paste my image, Control V. Now that I have my image in Illustrator, I need to convert it into a vector file. A vector graphic is artwork made up of points, lines, and curves that are based upon mathematical equations rather than solid colored square pixels like a normal image. This will allow the machine to read the lines and know where to cut. In order to do this, we hit image trace. And I like to choose, if it's just black and white, I like to choose black and white logo so that it doesn't try to create too many colors. I hit expand and ungroup it. And that gets all the different lines ungrouped. And then I go ahead and start deleting out the white. Any kind of negative space in there anything that would confuse my cutter. There's a couple spaces, I think. One more there. Now I wanna make an outline so that the cutter knows where to cut. Oh. So I click on that. I turn the fill off, turn the stroke on, and turn it up down to like 0.5. I don't want it too thick or the cutter's gonna think it's an engraving file. I'm then gonna resize it to fit my material. I'm gonna copy and paste it and I'm gonna put about three of them on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and mirror one of them just to get some variety in my cuts. So I'm gonna select one, go up to Object, Transform, Reflect, vertical and hit OK and that'll just give me some variety when I get these cut out. I'm going to go ahead and place them on my wood and then I'm going to go File, Save As and I'm going to change this to a PDF and rename Wildflower 3 and save it. I'm now going to set up the laser cutter by first adding my material, which is a 12 by 12 piece of plywood. We now need to focus the laser. We do this by placing a puck underneath the laser head. If the laser head needs to be moved up, you loosen the screw on the side of the machine and lift up the laser head. You then slide the puck underneath and allow the laser head to rest upon it. Once the laser head is resting on the puck, you use the screw again to tighten the laser head. Your laser head is now focused for the material that you have in the bed. Turn on your machine and once it's on, go to Network, Wireless, wait while it searches networks and choose Cougar Wi-Fi. Hit Next and wait for it to connect, then you can hit Done. Now that your laser cutter is set up, it's time to open up a browser and go to 10.7.80.253 to connect to the printer. Go to Import, File, 
click on this rectangle and choose your file. Hit open and it's going to come with a prompt asking you which option to open. The laser cutter can both cut and engrave and from a PDF it can do both cutting and engraving in one file. I recommend if you're only doing one of them to choose only that one to import so that it doesn't get confused. So we're going to choose import cut only since we're not doing any engraving today. Continue. And as you see this this is showing me the full bed of 12 by 20. But since I know my material is only 12 by 12, I need to make sure that my design is within those parameters. If I hit run perimeter, the machine will have the laser head go in a square around where it's going to be cutting so that I can make sure that the cutting head will never go off of my material. We also need to change our material. Right now it's set to acrylic. We're going to choose birch plywood, an eighth of an inch thick and we need to change our cutting setting. So we click on the images, make sure they're set to cut, make sure the depth is 100% and that our heat is high so that we can make sure we get a cut all the way through the material. I now can hit time estimate and see that it's gonna take about 16 minutes to cut. Once I've done all that, I can hit start and send to cutter. Before printing, you need to turn on the exhaust fan using the switch on the back. It will then bring you to this checklist. Hit the last three items on the checklist and press the start button twice. It will show you the estimated time and your laser will turn on and begin to cut. After cutting, I used acrylic paint to paint the wildflowers, tied some ribbon around them, and use hot glue to glue them to another piece of wood. I hope this has been an informative tutorial and has piqued your interest in some of the cool things that you can make using our laser cutter. Be sure to check out our website for more ideas and to submit your files today. You can also come in during our open hours or book an appointment. See you soon!